Since 1991, the Virtuosi Concert Series has been delighting audiences with world-class chamber music performed by some of the best musicians on the scene. On Sunday, October 30th at 3 p.m. at St. Andrews River Heights Church, the Virtuosi Concert Series will be kicking off their 2022-2023 season with a concert that features the Montreal-based ensemble in Fusion Baroque. This is just the first of a whole series of stellar concerts that make up the 2022-2023 Virtuosi season. This upcoming season features solo artists and chamber ensembles performing music from a wide array of musicians and composers. Here to tell us more about Virtuosi's upcoming season, I am joined by Jennifer Thiessen, who is the Artistic Director of Virtuosi Concerts. Hi Jen, it's nice to have you back here in studio. Hi Chris, it's great to be here. Mm -hmm. Uh, back in January, the press release came out that you would be taking over the reins of Virtuosi from their longtime director, Harry Strub. I want to first ask, how does it feel now that we are a little n over nine months in? How does it feel to have a season actually start with you at the helm? It feels very good. I have to say, it's very exciting. Uh, this is the side of this job that was really intriguing and inviting to me when I when I first saw the job posting and imagined being able to make opportunities for the amazing artists I know to be playing and to discover artists I haven't heard of yet and programs that they're doing and, and be in charge of a space where they would be invited to come and play. That was what was really exciting for me. So the process of actually talking to the musicians making all of this a reality has been really a highlight of the year. So seeing it all in print, seeing the brochure and all their photos lined up together, it, it really, it gives me a thrill, I have to say, it's exciting. <laughs> That's great. Uh, can you briefly talk about how the season uh, came together and specifically how the performers were chosen? Did you yourself have any say into what performers would be taking part in this upcoming season? Yes, I actually, these were a lot of these performers were actually the people I presented when I did my interview for this job, in fact. And part of what we were asked to do was create a mock season. So I went ahead in my mind with no, you know, logistical limitations. It was a theoretical mock season. And I programmed musicians and programs, their programs that they've been curating and performing. I made a season that I thought would be kind of my dream season. And at the end of the day, when it came time, when I got the job and it came time to actually contact people, there were quite a number uh, in the current uh, coming up season that were on that initial mock season. So it's really fun to see they were kind of my top ideal uh, people to program. The season's incredibly varied. Uh, it's not straight up Bach, Beethoven, and Mozart. There's some Rebecca Clark. There's Barbara Strossi. There's music of the Canadian pianist Stuart Goodyear. There's even music for, help me out with the pronunciation here, Turkish Kanun. Kanun. Yeah. Uh, and a concert called Ukrainian Wreath that's going to feature soprano Andriana Chuchman and the Husli male chorus. Why is having this variety of styles and composers so important to you? It is time, I think, for classical music to think about what we're doing, what we're presenting, and who is involved and invited into this community. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's everyone and could and should reflect everyone who wants to be part of it. Um, at the same time, recognizing the roots of, you know, European Western classical chamber music and, and solo music for recitals, which has been really at the root of um, Virtuosi's programming and so much classical music programming. Um, and this is why we've called the season Roots and Branches, to recognize that this is where we're coming from and own it and value it while branching out, um, taking a kind of wide view of what chamber music is, what classical music is. Also, many different cultures and traditions have classical right. music. So considering all of this and, and also some of the lost voices from the past who were creating music but weren't, um, didn't make it to the canon for various, you know, social, political reasons. And 
and then who is making music now that possibly isn't being invited or or hasn't been fully recognized to the extent that they could be. Mm-hmm. Those are some of the considerations I was thinking about. And one of the things that struck me about uh, the season when I was looking at it is there is a very good represent- representation of female composers. I'm thinking here in particular of the Infusion Baroque concert that's happening at the end of the month, but also the concert with uh, Marina Thibault. So this was a, a conscious de- decision by you to have the this feature? This was a conscious de- decision, yes. It was... It's something that's important to me personally. Um, it's also, I think, one of the elements that's becoming that a lot of people are becoming very aware of in classical music programming. How frequently, you know, we can be thinking about progressive programming and even be aware of the the imbalances of gender representation, um, and then still, when it comes time to make a program, it takes extra time and effort and research sometimes to avoid making the same choices that we've made in the past. Mm -hmm. And because we love so much of this repertoire so much, you know, we want to hear Brahms piano quartets and we want to hear Beethoven string quartets. And um, at at the same time, there's so much more music that hasn't been programmed and hasn't been given a chance to get in there. And it's quality music. It's gorgeous music. Yep. It's written by women or people who weren't uh, allowed to be part of the inner circles or throughout history were, you know, sort of removed or neglected from these sort of decisions, programming decisions or uh, things like that through time, not for reasons of the quality of their music. I, I mean, for all of the reasons. The yeah. Reasons. It just the thought thought of the day. You know, it's it's you know it, it's crazy. I'm even thinking here with uh, the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra. They're performing, uh, I think, an Amy Beach Symphony, and Florence Price's music has been recorded. I know Marina Thibault, who's going to be here in November with Virtuosi, is going to be performing music of Rebecca Clark, her viola sonata, which is just a great piece. It's all quality music, and in fact. Now, I'm just thinking as, as you're talking, um, uh, the, the National Ensemble put out a CD of Fanny Mendelssohn's String Quartet. It's equally as good as her brother's. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think the reason why we don't hear this stuff is because at the time, they were women. And mm-hmm. that's terrible. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's just a thing. And it's so exciting to see so a program like Infusion Baroque's program on October, October 30th, Virtuosa, to see this, you know, even from the Baroque period, a complete program Um, of music by women and it's gorgeous music it's sort of a relief I think as a as a woman and as someone who's working toward um, you know gender equality in different areas not only classical music programming but just to see the result of what when someone does research digs up this music Mm -hmm. performs it well and gives it a chance it's like it's such a celebration and a like a yeah, it's a wonderful thing just to to have a light shone on this music and have the chance to experience it and, and see those women from hundreds of years ago and the work that they were doing and how yeah. esteemed they were at the time as well. Like some of them were very well known. They were famous and they, were, they this program also, they also perform works by some more well-known composers um, who are men, but who were writing for women performers. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, not because of some of the reasons we've been told in the past, like they were in love with the soprano, so they wrote for her or something. It's like, yeah. oh, this was the best cellist around, so they wanted her to play their music. Right, right, like, right. It's, it's so fun and celebratory to be able to, um, yeah, bring this perspective and value to the music. Yeah, it's like entering a, uh, it's like discovering a new room to your house yes. that is amazing and that you've never knew existed exactly. and, and it is so great, yeah. Um, okay, so can you give us a brief rundown of this season, uh, maybe mentioning artists and perhaps focusing on highlights highlights that for you you're particularly excited about? Definitely. So I'll go chronologically. Okay. Our next concert is October 30th. It's Infusion Baroque, who is a quartet from Montreal of really wonderful... Um, Baroque, historical Baroque musicians. It's uh, four women from 
currently based in Montreal. They're from various places. And the program they're doing is called Virtuosa. So that was also fun. It was fun to put it first so we could say Virtuosi presents Virtuosa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I couldn't let that one go. Um, but their program is all based around uh, a larger project called Virtuosa that they have been doing for a few years. They have made videos and um, like speaking and describing the history of this music, the background of their research in discovering and uncovering some of it, and then uh, performing it as well. And their album is incredible. It's by the same name, Virtuosa, and it's a double CD album. It's really amazing. Yeah, so, I've, as we were talking just before we went to air, it, I just recently put it into our Classic 107 systems, and it is, it's killer. It's oh, great. Wonderful. So your yeah. listeners will possibly hear mm -hmm. them before they can even hear them in the concert. Mm -hmm. um, the next concert is November 18th. It's Marina Thibault, violist, and Janelle Fung, piano. Marina used to be based in Montreal. I know her from there, and Janelle is still in Montreal. Marina is now a professor of viola at UBC, and they do a beautiful program, which we've called From Far Above, Bringer of Light. So <laughs> Bringer of Light is the title of one of the pieces they're playing. And From Far Above, references another one of the titles and Marina was saying she really loves this idea because it is all composed by women or gender non-binary people uh -huh. so she loves the <clears throat> from far above and the light element as kind of the the hope and possibility of of where things are going as far as programming and creating new music and and just discovering new music and also <laughs> recovering historical music, old pieces like um, Rebecca Clark and, mm -hmm. and some of these others, um, and new compositions like uh, there's one by Melody McIver, who now lives in Winnipeg, was in Brandon until um, this current year. Right. And so we have, yeah, a composer based right here in Winnipeg and... Um, some other new works. But this one is special for me because I'm also a violist, so it's fun to present viola and piano works because I, I know how wonderful they yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Viola sometimes doesn't get picked first. <laughs> it's that kid on the team. Yeah, yeah. They get picked first, but they end up being the most valuable player. So I'm really excited for people to discover this repertoire, some of which is so known to to violists and Mar marina is a heck of a good violist yeah, i mean she's she's, she's great she's been to virtuosi before with her trio uh clarinet piano right i interviewed them the last time oh, they wonderful. they stopped through yeah, yeah, yeah. And i know people really love them so mm -hmm. it'll be sort of a return for her and she also mentioned their their virtuosi concert was the last concert she played before the pandemic uh -huh. and this concert will be her first sort of wow. after Full, full circle. Yeah, so that's yeah. really special. Um, the next one is December 10th. This one is also, <laughs> I'm going to say each one is special to me because they are. So December 10th, Andriana Trichman will be featured in a concert we're calling Vinok, the Ukrainian Wreath. And Andriana is curating this concert, so that's important to mention. She's not just being brought in as a soloist, which she is just a phenomenal soprano, as you know, and it's it's so wonderful that she's based here and has done so well. And, you know, just out of being so proud of her and her work and wanting to feature her um, and Ukrainian music. And this idea came about before the conflict in Ukraine was really, really as bad as it has become. Um, it came from a desire also to represent uh, over time with future seasons as well to represent different communities of Winnipeg and of Manitoba in the programming that we do. Mm -hmm. There's such a strong, amazing Ukrainian community here. So I thought it would be really special for Andriana to curate works that she knows and loves of sure, sure. those by Ukrainian um, people. So she's curating this program. Um, she will be playing with Craig Terry, a pianist um, and music director, Grammy-winning pianist himself that she has already collaborated with a lot mm -hmm. in the States. And, of course, who's the Ukrainian male chorus, which I'm so, I'm so excited that they 
are going to be. Yeah, our own Simon Rusnak will be on stage singing along. Yeah, yeah. So wonderful. Yeah, so Mm. that'll be like holiday carols and uh, classical works and film music that she has a particular soft spot for. Mm -hmm. Um, The next one is an experiment. So it's January 15th. We have the, uh, the Mentorship Concert Project. So this is a project... Uh, we got project funding from the Manitoba Arts Council for this one, but this one was a really kind of an experimental new idea that comes from the Young Artist Program of Virtuosi, which is a long-running mm-hmm. project people, I think, really enjoy. Yeah. Um, and so every concert we do this year will have a young artist performing at the very opening of the concert, as in the past. And then in addition, we have this... Um, mentorship concert project which is it will be a joint chamber music group comprised of students and professionals so they'll be playing side by side right in a in a group together doing a cohesive concert program so we have now the applications from the students and are deciding who the final yeah, and my understanding is that the professional musicians will be chosen based on what pieces the accepted students want to play and the instrument and the instruments that get chosen. Is that right? Yes, yeah, so it's kind of a puzzle. Like we we decided not to limit it to certain instruments. We decided to open it to any students or yeah, people who have are just kind of pre-professional. Right. Very end of their studies particularly um as a way of helping people get a kind of a, a leg up into starting their careers mm-hmm. because that is such a difficult aspect of becoming a musician is coming out of your studies and to be able to start working. Right. Um, so we decided to open up to any applicants and then see what instruments they played and see if we could create an ensemble based on that. So we had um, contacted a number of professionals in Manitoba to see if they would be interested in the case that their int- instrument would be um, involved right. in the ensemble. So this will be announced soon. Um, we're currently, yeah, puzzling out what exactly the instrumentation and the repertoire will be. Right, right. So that, but that's going to be really fun. And I think it will be, yeah. I, I, I'm really looking forward to this one. Yeah, the the Roots and Branches Mentorship pro, uh, Project just it sounds so interesting. It's going to make for a really interesting concert. This, you know, young up and coming musicians being paired up with professional musicians playing side by side. I mean, that's what becoming a pro is all about, right? Exactly, and you learn so much by playing along with great musicians. You get better. It is the best way to learn. Yeah. You play better when you're playing next to someone who is great, mm-hmm. and there are. There is, it's not just information, but ways of learning. It really is mentorship, like in, or apprenticeship might have been another word we could have used, but there, it's a different kind of learning than being in a lesson and being told to right. play like this, use this fingering, or even having it demonstrated and copying back. But when you're, <clears throat> you're working with an actual project in mind, an actual performance, you're not being evaluated on that performance as in school <clears throat> and everyone is being paid. So this is a, it is a fully professional um, engagement for every person that right. in the ensemble and, and to work, to fig, to learn how people work toward a concert in a professional setting yeah. is, is part of it's g- it's It's going to be a great concert. What's after the Roots and Branches Mentorship Project? It is February 24th. We have Ensemble Made in Canada back, mm-hmm. and they're doing what we're calling Canadian Odyssey. So this is a postponed concert from last year. It was canceled, in, I think it was in February of last year, and it was canceled due to pandemic reasons. And so we're really happy that they were able to reschedule and come back this year. So they're doing, they've been to Virtuosi before, and I know the subscribers and audience really loves this ensemble, and we're really excited to have them back. And they do, they have something called their Mosaic Project, which is compositions from across Canada, and not always typical classical contemporary yeah. composers. They have some pop musicians and different people from different um, musical communities and backgrounds who have written pieces for them 
reflecting all or many different regions of Canada yeah. here. It's it's a great disc. I think it was nominated for a Juno yes. or it might have even won. I, I think so. I think so. Yeah, it's a, the mosaic disc is, yes. is is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So they'll play that as well as a piece by Stuart Goodyear and uh, Saint Saens um, piano quartet. <clears throat> so that'll, along with everybody's new repertoire and unknown repertoire, we often always have something um, that's more well known mm -hmm. alongside. So there's something for everyone. Um, and then in March, March 26th, there's Didem Vassar playing her canoon, which we talked about, and uh, Patrick Graham, the percussionist, that she'll be bringing with her. So Didem and Patrick are amazing musicians. I met them when I subbed in a year ago, basically, with Constantinople Ensemble, um, and we did a concert together. I subbed in for someone who couldn't be there, and then I met Didem and Patrick, who both play with that ensemble. And she is also a composer and has written this, like a set of pieces for Canoon, her instrument, which is a kind of plucked, it sits on the lap and is strummed and plucked basically. It's gorgeous, like there's some kind of harp-ish sound. Yeah, yeah. Very melismatic, like a lot of like runs and huh. um, flourishes and it's, it's beautiful. It's incredible. And she's such a great uh, performer. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so she's composed works for featuring the canoon. And then also with a string ensemble of five string players. And her idea was to tour this music with local musicians. So she will be playing with a group of five string players from Manitoba, including myself. Which so is one of the, yeah. I, get to, I get to play with. Uh -huh. Everyone else this time. Um, and there will also be Carrie DeWars and Leanne Zacharias and Marika Galea from mm -hmm. Brandon University, all of them, and Momoko Matsumura on violin, and I'll be playing viola. So, and Patrick does percussion, like various styles, of, like hand percussion. And right, right, right. Things. Yeah. So it'd be sort of a. a East meets, meets West uh, exactly. sound. Exactly. Yeah. She has training, like she has Turkish classical training and Western classical training. So for her, this is a, her sort of synthesizing of her different musical backgrounds. Right, right, right. Yeah. And then the last concert of this season is April 30th. Maxim Lando is coming and doing his Maximum Velocity solo <laughs> piano concert. <laughs> Maxim is a, he's a powerhouse, he's a wonderful pianist, and yeah, he's going to come and I think just blow everybody out of the water and play a program. Yeah, he's developing his program specifically for Virtuosi, and he, one of his specialties is doing transcriptions of um, jazz and different music from different genres as well, so he does all the kind of standard piano repertoire, the big standard repertoire as well as Chick Corea transcriptions and this kind of thing. So oh, wow. kind of do his unique take on piano. Oh, that's going to be great. Yeah. Um, well, you, you touched on it earlier. Uh, there are going to be uh, young artists uh, performing at the beginning of every single one of the concerts. How has that gone over this past year? But I'm just thinking in particular because of the COVID issue and the rest of it. How, is, how, is, how, how has that been going? Um, it went... Very well this year. If I'm not mistaken, we had the most applicants ever. Great. Um, and yeah, again, had kind of ran into needing to choose only seven out of many very, very excellent applicants, mm -hmm. which is hard. That's yeah, yeah. Well, there's part of me that would just love everyone. <laughs> I want everyone to have a chance. But at the end of the day, there were. We're only seven concerts this year, so we can only pick seven people. But it's, yeah, I think there's interest, and it's exciting to see the level and the enthusiasm and, and thought that students in Manitoba are at and, yeah, what right. and what they're working, they're all working on. And, yeah, it is, it is kind of heartbreaking, you know, to know that they've all been doing their musical studies largely from home or on Zoom and this kind of thing for the last few years. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, 
I definitely feel compassion for that and knowing, you know, knowing the experience of music school and that feeling of being in this, hearing everyone else practicing. And it's also something to be said for having something to simply work for, whether it be a recital or yes. gig or whatever. I mean, it's it just helps keep you motivated. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, I remember last year in the season when Miona Milovanovic was playing. She was the young artist for one of the programs, and she said that that was her first time playing in public since the pandemic had started. Yeah. That was, yeah, that really hit me. Like, I hadn't really realized, yeah. you know, we're so happy to have them there playing for us. I think I hadn't necessarily... And I think it's such an important part of being a musician. I mean, uh, the old adage, you, you get less nervous the more and more, more times you perform. And course, if yes. you haven't been performing in two years and you're a young musician, it's yeah. uh, daunting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so... I think it's great that we're continuing this program. Mm -hmm. uh, Jen, the season sounds just amazing. All of the concerts take place at St. Andrews River Heights Church, which is at 255 Oak Street. Uh, where can people go to find out more details about the season and subscribe and get tickets? For tickets, it's not too late to subscribe for the whole season. It saves you dollars and you can always exchange your tickets for someone else if you're not able to be there. Um, and also individual tickets are available and $10 student tickets are always available at the door. Um, you can go to our website, virtuosiconcerts.ca, and all of the ticket information is there. Or you can call 204-786-9000 and talk to our lovely interim ED, Heather Lewis, who is doing an amazing job and we're so happy she's there. Um, Yes, and there are also prices for under 30 for subscriptions. So there's kind of a standard price, and then there's an under 30 price, just so people know. Great, it's great, great. Available. Mm -hmm. uh, this has just been great. The up some upcoming season, like I was saying, it just it sounds so great. It is really going to be something. Jen, thanks so much for taking the time to chat with, chat with me about Virtuosi this year. Thanks. Thanks.